Hello students. Today let's begin with another chapter that is chapter number 19 of your NCERT textbook excretory products and their elimination. In this chapter we'll be studying in detail about the human excretory system. Now first based on let's see what is the meaning of excretion. What do you mean by excretion? Excretion means elimination of metabolic waste products from the animal body to regulate composition of body fluids and tissues. So this is the definition for excretion. That means excretion is nothing but the elimination of nitrogenous waste materials from the body or in other words the waste products which are produced as a result of the metabolism. Metabolism involves various reactions taking place inside the body. So these metabolic waste will be eliminated from the body and that process is called as excretion. Now why excretion is necessary? It is necessary to regulate the composition of body fluids. Uh, now let's based on the major excretory products, the organisms are classified into three different types. Before that, do you know which are the three major nitrogenous waste products formed in our body? The three major nitrogenous products are ammonia, urea and uric acid. And based on the major excretory product, animals are classified into three types. Now of these three nitrogenous waste products, ammonia is the most toxic form and it requires large amount of water to be uh, for uh, to eliminate. So ammonia is the most toxic nitrogenous waste product and uric acid is the least toxic waste product or the nitrogenous waste product. Now animals based on the major excretory product they are classified into three groups that is one is called as a monotelic organism another one ureotelic organism and the third one uricotelic organism now a monotelic organisms are those organisms where the major excretory product is ammonia and as we have seen, ammonia is the most toxic form and hence it requires water for its elimina elimination. Hence, most of the bony fishes, then aquatic amphibians and aquatic insects, they come under this group that is uh, the organisms which eliminate ammonia. Major excretory product is ammonia. And such animals are called as ammonotelic animals and the process of excreting ammonia is called ammonotelism. The process is called as ammonotelism. Okay. The same way, uh, animals like mammals, uh, terrestrial amphibians, marine fishes, their major excretory product is urea and such animals which excrete urea, they are called as ureotelic animals. And the third group that is birds, reptiles and land snails and some insects, they excrete uric acid in the form of a pellet or paste and that, that is called as, such animals are called as uricotelic animals. So hope you got it. So these are the three different group of animals based on the major excretory product. Okay, so a mono, you may get this as a question mention the three different groups of animals based on the major excretory product or you may get a question what are ammonotelic organisms give examples what are ureotelic organisms give example uricotelic organisms give example so based on the major excretory product so first case it is ammonia the second case it is urea so we come under that group and the third one is uricotelic so there it is uric acid Hope it's clear? Right. Now we'll move on to the next, that is the excretory organs in different organisms. When we discussed uh, the different phylums, we have studied that in each phylum, there are certain specialized cells or specialized structures which help in the process of uh, excretion or osmoregulation. And uh, let's uh, once again 
uh, just recollect which are the organs the first one protonephridia or flame cells i hope you remember that flame cells are the cells which are specialized the cells which help in excretion found mainly in platyhelminthes okay so here uh, protonephridia or flame cells are the excretory structures in platyhelminthes not only in platyhelminthes the flame cells act as excretory structures in rotifers some annelids and a cep and cephalocordates example is amphioxus so you have to remember these examples because once it was asked name the uh, um, excretory organ found in amphioxus so it is flame cells okay now the another type what is the function of protonephria nephridia its function is to uh, help in the ionic and fluid volume regulation or in other words osmo regulation water balance of the body then next uh, another excretory organ is are the nephridia nephridia are nothing but tubular excretory structures found in annelids especially in earthworms nephridia help to remove nitrogenous waste and also help in maintaining fluid and ionic balance third uh, uh, excretory organ which we have already studied is malpighian tubules they are the excretory structures found in most of the insects including cockroaches now uh, we have also studied about uh, yes what the function of malpighian tubules again the same they help in removal of nitrogenous waste and osmo regulation and the last uh, 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 type of excretory organs are the antennal glands or the green glands which are found in aquatic annelids and crustaceans okay like uh, prawns so these are uh, just uh, remember the names of these uh, different uh, excretory organs found in different organisms protonephridia also called as flame cells nephridia malpighian tubules and antennal glands now now let's discuss about the human excretory system we have studied in your lower classes about the uh, anatomy of human excretory system let's discuss in detail uh, the ex human excretory system consists of a pair of kidneys consists of a pair of ureters that is those are the long tubes which arise from the kidneys then a pair a urinary bladder and a urethra so in the picture given here you can see all these parts so kidneys are the bean shaped the reddish bean shaped structures from there two long tubes descend down and uh, those are the ureters and it opens into a bladder and that bladder is a urinary bladder and the opening of the urinary bladder is called as urethra now let's study in detail about each of these parts the first one so here you can see an enlarged portion of a section of a uh, kidney okay now kidneys are reddish brown bean shaped structures where are they situated they are found between the levels of last thoracic and third lumbar vertebrae close to the dorsal inner wall of the abdominal cavity i hope you all know the position of uh, the kidneys each kidney it has a notch on its inner side called the hilum through which the ureter blood vessels and the nerves enter so now what is hilum so if you have seen a uh, bean seeds you must have seen that there will be a notch a depression uh, where you find a white colored uh, structure in the case of beans uh, bean uh, seeds so the same way in the kidneys also there will be a notch notch means a small depression and that depression that area is called as the hilum and it is through the hilum that the blood vessels the nerves and the blood vessels the nerves and the ureters leave or enter the kidneys through this hilum okay so that is about hilum now uh inside the hilum you can see a funnel shaped structure so here you can see this is that funnel shaped the part uh, which is called as the renal pelvis renal pelvis has small projections and these projections are called as the calices renal calices so renal pelvis is a funnel shaped region which you can see here 
right and then renal pelvis are those uh, this, this is renal pelvis and from there small projections are found and these are the renal calyces then inside the kidneys you will find two zones you can see two zones over here the outer region is called as a cortex and the inner region is called as the medulla the outer region is called as a cortex and the inner region is called as a medulla the medulla that is the inner region is divided into few conical projections you can see certain conical projections here i hope you can see pyramid like structures and these are called as the medullary pyramids and these medullary pyramids base of the medullary pyramids they are called as a renal calyx and singular is calyx and plural is calyces in between in between the renal pyramids you will find or the medullary pyramids you will find columns and that is the spaces and they are called as the columns of bertini columns of bertini you have to remember all these uh, points that is the structure of kidney you may get a question explain the structure of human kidney with a neat label diagram so this is a diagram that you have to draw the enlarged portion of a section of the kidney there you can see kidneys are reddish brown structures then there is a notch like structure which is called as a hilum and it is through this region the blood vessels the nerves and the ureters enter then inside the kidney there are two zones outer zone is called as a cortex and the inner region is called as a medulla then the renal pelvis has certain small projections which are called as a renal calyces and inside the medulla you find number of pyramid like structures called as the renal pyramids or medullary pyramids and between the renal pyramids or the medullary pyramids you find columns medullary renal columns which are called as columns of bertini so that's all about uh, the structure of a human kidney now let's see what are the functions of the different parts of the excretory system kidneys what is their function their main function is to filter waste and excess water from the blood the function of ureters ureters are uh, tubes that take the urine from the kidney to the urinary bladder urinary bladder is a sac that stores urine and then urethra is a small tube that leads the urine out of the body so these are the different parts of the urinary system and their functions hope you all understood right now let now let's discuss the structure of nephron nephrons are the structural and functional units of kidneys each kidney has nearly 1 million complex tubular structures called nephrons so there are two kidneys each kidney has 1 million almost 1 million complex tubular structures and each nephron has two main parts as you can see in the picture given here there is a cup shaped region cup shaped region and inside that you find a network of capillaries and below that there is a tubular part so the first part that is the cup shaped region with the network of blood capillaries that is called as that is a cup shaped region with the network of capillaries that is called as the malpighian capsule or the renal capsule so the first part is the malpighian capsule or the renal capsule and the second part is the renal tubule the continuation will be there so this part is the renal tubule and this part is the first part is the malpighian capsule also called as the renal capsule so here Uh, i have uh, given it as glomerulus and uh, renal tubule but it's actually not glomerulus you have to correct it here it is actually each nephron has two parts the malpighian capsule or the renal capsule and renal tubule so two parts are renal capsule and so here you have to write it as renal capsule okay 
so the first part is renal capsule and the second part is the renal tubule then glomerulus is a tuft of capillaries a network of capillaries which is found inside this cup shaped region which is called as a bowman's capsule then the network of capillaries found inside the cup shaped region is called as the glomerulus so which is a glomerulus this part is the glomerulus what you find here the network of capillaries that is called as the glomerulus then the glomerulus receives blood through a wide arteriole called as the efferent arteriole so the uh, blood vessel through which the blood enters the glomerulus that is called as the efferent arteriole and the another after through the efferent arteriole the blood enters the glomerulus and the blood leaves the glomerulus through another arteriole which is called as the efferent arteriole so there are two arterioles one is efferent which is wider another one is efferent which is narrower so these are the two arterioles then the efferent arteriole that is this arteriole after coming out it branches and rebranches around the uh, tubular part that is around the uh, renal tubule to form a network of capillaries which is called as uh, the peritubular capillaries so you find a network of capillaries around the tubular part of the nephron and that is called as the peritubular capillaries the renal tubule Uh, begins with a double walled cup like structure called the bowman's capsule which encloses the glomerulus so this is a cup shaped region which i have already told you glomerulus along with the malpighian capsule that is called as the malpighian body or renal uh, corpuscle or renal capsule you can write it as renal capsule the tubule connects continues further here you can see the tubule it continues downwards so this is a glomerulus the c shaped cup is a glomerulus and it comes down as the tubular region so this tubular part is called as the tubular part is called as the renal tubule this whole region that is a renal tubule now the first part of the renal tubule is called as the proximal convoluted tubule so in the picture you can see this part is the proximal convoluted tubule this part is the proximal convoluted tubule then uh, followed by the proximal convoluted tubule continues as continues downwards as a loop which is called as the henle's loop so here you can see this loop is called as the henle's loop a u shaped the structure and this henle's loop has a descending limb which is called as the the it has a descending limb which comes down and an ascending limb then the henle's loop ascending limb of the henle's loop continues as the distal convoluted tubule this part is the distal convoluted tubule the distal convoluted tubule opens into a long duct which is called as a long tubule which is called as the collecting duct the collecting duct of many nephrons converge and open into the renal pelvis so where do you find this nephrons nephrons are found inside the uh, uh, medulla region or inside the kidney okay and the nephrons it has uh, the two main parts of the nephrons are the malpighian body or the renal uh, capsule and the renal tubule the malpighian capsule consists of a c shaped bowman's capsule and the glomerulus then malpighian capsule extends downwards as the proximal convoluted tubule it comes down as a u shaped region which is called as the so in this picture you can see it clearly so this part is the this part is the malpighian corpuscle right then below that you find the this part which is the proximal convoluted tubule and then comes the 
Henley's loop, which is this part. This is the Henley's loop. Okay. Then, after Henley's loop, you find the proximal convoluted tubule. So here you can see the proximal convoluted tubule. This part is the proximal convoluted tubule, which opens into the collecting duct. So this is the collecting duct, long tubule. Okay. Now the this is the efferent arteriole. This one is the efferent arteriole. And this one is the efferent arteriole. Efferent arteriole after coming out, it branches, it divides and re-divides. Can you see that? This branch around the tubular part of the nephron, right? It, this is that tubular uh, pe, uh, network of capillaries. This network of capillaries is called as the peritubular capillaries. The peritubular capillaries around the this peritubular capillaries around the Henle's loop. So this is Henle's loop, right? And the peritubular capillaries around the Henle's loop, this one that is called as the vasa recta. So the whole peritubular capillaries, network of capillaries around the nephron that is called as the uh, peritubular capillaries and the network of capillary which is formed around only around the Henle's loop that is called as vasa recta. Hope it's clear. So next that is there are two types of nephrons. The one type is called as the juxta medullary nephron and the other type is called as the cortical nephrons. Now juxta medullary nephrons they are uh, in such nephrons the Henle's loop will be short and they extend only a little into the medulla. Major part of these nephrons will be found in the cortical uh, uh, cortical region okay loop of henle is short and it extends only a little into the medulla whereas the cortical nephrons the loop of henle will be very long and the loop of henle will be found deep into the medulla then in uh, juxta medullary nephrons the glomeruli lie close to the inner margin of the cortex whereas in the case of cortical nephrons the glomeruli lie in the outer cortex Okay, so these are the two points of difference between juxta medullary nephrons and cortical nephrons. So these are the two types of nephrons based on their location. One is juxta medullary and the other one is cortical. Hope you all understood. So today we have discussed about the uh, what is excretion. We discussed about the three different types of organisms based on the major excretory product. We discussed about the human excretory system. We studied in detail about the structure of the kidney and also we studied about the structure of nephron. So please study uh, the structure of nephron in detail, even the diagram. Hope you all understood. That's all for today. Thank you.